guys, what's up? Welcome back to Stormworks. We are back working on our oil rig, and I'm going to start today's episode with something a little bit different. So I did a lot of the automation for the oil rig off camera in between the last episode and this episode. So I have just got a quick little couple minute clip of it doing its own thing without me pressing any buttons. So we're just going to kind of check it out for a little bit, and then we'll get back into the building. We've got some kind of interesting builds to do today. So what I want to do in the episode is I want to basically add a pre-oil heater from the generator's coolant and you guys will kind of see that when we get to it um, and then we're gonna start working on a giant cargo crane for this as well so you guys can see I'm using a little or I added a little crane here this crane actually wasn't made by me it was made by Jack um, Jack also did the oil drill rod container and um, part of the part of the crane not the, I'll, I'll kind of show it when I have a better example of it, but uh, let me let me change it back to day here. It's a little too dark for those shenanigans. I just wanted to show off the lights, but I got some panels in here. This is all of our fluids. You guys can see we got our water, we got our clean, clean slurry, our dirty slurry, our oil, and then our jet fuel and our diesel. So you guys can see the uh, oil is going down and our jet fuel and our diesel are going up and that means our refinery is also working. So that is good news. Now I've got a lot of work to do on the inside here. I'm gonna turn the generator on real quick. I just wanna make sure that we can uh, kind of produce diesel faster than we use it. And uh, you know, the rest of it is kind of just doing its own thing, like I said. So it's basically, it's just two buttons to operate all of this. You just have to open the drill rod storage and then you just turn a key on that says drill. So um, it'll do its own thing. You guys can see that the, the light just turned on showing that it's ready for a new rod. Now I, you know, obviously I said there's only one button. I go back, I change that. That push button's there just to get a new rod, but this will all be automated. That's the only button you gotta press currently. And this is the crane I was talking about that Jack made. Now I modified it a little bit later on so it doesn't use a winch. That way you guys can use this in all physics details, but it does function basically exactly the same. And you guys can see the clamp moves down and so does the rod and then the pump jack is going to connect to the top and start pushing it down while pushing slurry in and out so i just kind of wanted to show this to you guys quick um, we haven't really done too much of the drilling and uh, you guys haven't seen that in action yet so that's kind of what this is about and uh, i just kind of thought you guys would appreciate it before we get back into the building so as I said in the last couple of episodes, this thing is nowhere near being done, but you guys can at least see it functioning. We've got quite a lot of work to do, and especially in today's episode, we are going to try to get a crane where you see that giant green rod sticking out from the uh, side of the platform. And uh, then we're also, like I said, we're gonna get a cooling loop from the engine generator into the oil feed, so pre-warms the oil before it goes into the furnaces. But that's pretty much what we got in store for today's episode. So if you guys like this build, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. We've got plenty more episodes on this to go. We are going to get right into the build with this one. And uh, I have my, my pipes off, as you guys can see. And essentially what I'm doing here is I'm just going to put a couple liquid liquid heat exchangers into um, the oil and the engine coolant. So the reason I'm doing that is it's completely unnecessary, like pretty much everything I do. Um, so essentially we're going to be taking some of the... Uh, the cooling off of the engine by putting the heat into the oil, but this is going to kind of do two things. So it's going to obviously help cool the engine down a little bit, our generator, but it's also going to make the furnaces have to do less work. So it's going to act almost as like a pre-warmer for the oil coolant or the oil refining tank. And this is again, completely unnecessary. So I'm going to actually add a bunch of valves in here so you guys can turn it on and off if you'd like. Um, you don't really need to mess with it. And to be honest, I don't really know how much it does, but I just thought it would be kind of a fun little thing to do. And, uh, you know, I've, I've got this pipe running right by the engine. So, you know, why not? Mine as well. And so we just got to pull a couple coolant lines off of this generator and make sure they get pumped through the uh, liquid heat or yeah, the liquid liquid heat exchangers. Now I could probably use a bigger one or a bigger setup, but I uh, didn't want to go too overcomplicated with this. I just wanted something simple that, um, you know, kind of just did a little bit of work for both the engine and the oil. Now I did get an interesting comment from um, someone when we were working on the refinery that you can 
actually do kind of the same thing with the exhaust gas out of the furnaces. So if you guys are going to be making, um, you know, your own cooling towers or refining towers or anything like that sort, um, just kind of know that you can kind of improve the efficiency of a lot of the stuff that you're building by doing, um, by drawing heat out of those kind of systems. And so that was something, the exhaust, uh, was something that I didn't really think of when I was building the, uh, the refining tower. So I'm probably not going to go back and do it just because we're already kind of limited on space back there. But, um, you know, I thought it was a really cool, uh, suggestion and I just kind of wanted to mention something to you guys about it because, you know, it's a, it's it really is a good idea if you are going to, um, kind of go through the hoops of trying to either heat, you know, 30,000 liters of liquid or, um, you know, cool down something like that. You might as well, you know, try to make it as, as efficient as possible. In our case, we have five furnaces on the oil rig, so it's not super efficient. But um, the main thing is that everything can be powered within the means of the generator. So even when we're at maximum power draws, the generator can generate enough electric for us to kind of handle that. And right here are the valves that I'm adding in. So if you want to turn off this preheater, you can, um, you know, you don't have to, it's kind of just there for not only the looks, but, um, just kind of gives you guys a little bit more flexibility. Now I can only think of really one reason that you would want to turn it off. Maybe you're in a really cool area and, um, you don't plan on using the refinery soon. So, um, you know, if you don't plan on turning the furnaces on until you fill that tank up, it might not be worth necessarily running it through the preheaters, but at the same time, it'll still keep the generator a little bit cooler. So it's not the worst thing. You guys can see right here, I'm adding a bypass valve. So basically how this system works is if you want it to not go through there, you just turn both valves. It, it closes the one on the top and opens the one on the right. So it just kind of loops through and goes back into the engine. Now, enough of these shenanigans. We are going to kind of wrap this up and we're going to head over to the other side of the platform and start working on a massive overhead crane. And that is pretty important. I'm going to spend a lot of time on that, but we're probably going to come back to it in another episode and make it look a little bit nicer just because, um, well, ropes are rubber bands in this game. And I find it very annoying that that is still an issue, even though they said it was fixed. It has not been fixed in the slightest, in my opinion, but um, I, I'm just kind of complaining. And, uh, you know, the, the thing that I find annoying is because I'm using ropes, or you have to basically use ropes for a crane, we have to lift that very heavy cargo container full of drill rods. And it's, it's very tricky to do that with the ropes being as kind of rubber bandy as they are. So um, we're just gonna kind of get the blocks down in this one and we're gonna, well, we'll come back to this in another episode and kind of finish it up. Uh, we're not gonna get it done in today's episodes. I just kind of wanted to get the footprint of it in place so we can start working about working around other um, kind of buildings and systems that we got to put in the uh, oil rig.
All right, well, we got this thing kind of looking like a crane. Now, I'm going to have to make it a little bit taller, but it's not going to, uh, it's not really going to change the shape all that much. I'm, like I said, I'm just going to kind of make it taller. It's not going to articulate or anything like that. It's just going to rotate around. I uh, thought about making it move up and down, but it's not really necessary for our purpose. It uh, just kind of needs to get to the central part of the deck right there. And then, you know, obviously <laughs> it's it's moving the oil rig all around right now, which is kind of funny. And it's getting caught on something. But um, I want to make sure that it kind of clears over that uh, the oil refining tank so you can't smash in anything. So we're going to get it taller than that. But it's not going to pivot just because... Well, um, you know, physics bodies generally mean trouble in this game, especially when it comes to making cranes. So um, I'm going to try to avoid that as well as, um, you know, this, this oil rig already has enough physics bodies as it is. So we're going to try to avoid that. And I played around with the idea of putting wheels here to kind of support it, but I didn't really like that. Um, now it's going to kind of look like a, a, a tower crane like you would see on a high rise construction site. So you're going to have a, a kind of a box up on top where you can crawl to with a ladder and that will control the rest of the crane. Now I am again going to kind of play with this quite a bit. We're going to actually have to add quite a few pulleys into this to make the, the rubber band ropes strong enough. God, that is, that is my single most uh, annoying or the single most annoying thing about this game to me. I really try not to complain about this game a lot, but that is one thing I really, really wish that was different. Um, but yeah, so it's going to kind of look like that. It's just going to slide back and forth and you can lower the, uh, the crane down, pick whatever you need up. And we're going to have not necessarily like a cargo area on the center of the platform, but there's going to be a lot more area or room there in case you need to lift things up. The only other thing that we're really going to need to use this uh, crane for is for crew change. So I'm going to add a crew change module. If you guys have ever seen that, it's uh, kind of funny how they do that on some of the oil rigs. Now we have a helipad and we have a ladder, so you can do crew change with helicopters or boats if you also want. But um, sometimes they have basically like this little um, cage with a bunch of seats in it that people kind of just strap in. And that way they can just pick people up off of a boat with a crane and then lower them onto the deck. It uh, makes crew change a little bit faster, and you guys will see that in a later episode. We're not going to do that in this episode, but I think it was just kind of a fun little addition to add to the oil rig because we have the space and the crane, so why not? And so I'm just going to swing this thing around, and we're going we're gonna to do our best at picking up this uh, drill rod container, but I'll spoil it for you guys right now. It's, it's not going to go too well, <laughs> so um, we'll give it a shot, but uh, you know this will kind of tell us what we need to work on and, and what needs to be fixed. So let's just get some of these ropes hooked up quick, and uh, I'm going to lower this down just a little bit more. Now, when we actually finish this up, there will be a bunch of cameras and spotlights and all that kind of stuff to assist you. And uh, again, we're just not going to get into the details of that right now, just because it's I'm just trying to make sure the crane actually functions before I uh, go ahead and finish it. And you guys can see that's on high physics. You can see how much of those ropes are stretching. It's it's quite crazy. Um, but let me try to release this and um, we'll try to. Oh, is that a. Yeah, that's a push button. So I got to change that quick. Um, that is a mistake on my my end. So let's just get that changed over to a toggle button. And that way it won't stay connected to the oil rig. Quick little fix. Just add a couple buttons and uh, we'll go back into the um, world and we'll try to finish it or we'll try to pick this up and we'll finish the episode out. All right, so we're back in the overworld. I got the uh, the shackle or whatever you call it down a little bit closer to where we can see, and I'm going to have to fix that too just because it, it needs to weigh a lot more. Um, a lot of times adding weight to the physics bodies actually helps them, which is kind of a strange mechanic, but also it'll swing around less and be more dangerous if it hits you, which is always fun. So um, let's just get this hooked up, and I fixed that button up. We changed it over to a toggle button so it shouldn't connect itself back to the deck. And we'll try to pick this up and flip it over the side of the oil rig. I'm sure we could probably get it off of the oil rig, but getting it back on, that, that might be a different story. So um, let me just tighten this up a little bit. And I'm going to kind of reattach all of the ropes. If you didn't know, every time you do that, they actually get a little bit shorter. So it's a good way to kind of tighten everything up, which um, is actually really useful. You guys can see as I did that, it pulled it over to the other side and we will reattach the ones on the close side to make them a little bit tighter. Now let me get back up into the crane. 
this platform will change quite a bit too. Um, it, it will be a lot better looking <laughs> if I'm being honest. Um, but yeah, we're going to just tighten this up, see if we can actually lift it up and you can see it's just stretching like crazy. Now this drill rod container, it is heavy, but that is, I mean, we're going to have to be able to pick it up regardless. There's no way that you guys are going to have to, or going to sit there and load each individual drill rod from another ship. So you guys could see we got it off just fine, but it is rubber bandy like crazy. And uh, the only way I could get around this was a bunch of pulleys and that kind of introduced some other issues with the crane, but it is what it is. And we're just kind of working with what we got. There's no better way to do it in my mind. So I'm just going to lower this down and uh, you guys can see we're tilting quite a bit in the oil rig. We still don't have that active stabilizer that I keep talking about and, and that'll come, you know, obviously later on, but um, it, it lowers it down just fine. So, I mean, theoretically you could unload this onto a boat right now, but I don't think we're going to be able to kind of use this system to, to pick it up and put it back on the deck and that's kind of the more important of the two operations. It spawns with drill rods on it. So, you know, when you go to unload the drill rods, it's going to be a lot lighter because the container is going to be empty. It's not going to have any drill rods in it, which there's 32 in there if you guys are new to the series. Um, so you can drill a distance of 320 meters. Anything beyond that, you're going to need a new drill rod storage container. So um, that's kind of why we need to make this reloadable is, you know, if you want to drill to a depth further than 320 meters, this basically has to be something that works. But that is enough of me ranting in this one. We got the bones of this crane done. We'll come back to it in a later episode. That's pretty much all the building we've got in this episode. So if you stay to the end, thank you so much. I know we were kind of a little all over the place with this one, but I wanted to show off the, uh, the functionality of the oil rig a little bit before we started doing more building. The last couple episodes have just been a lot of us um, just kind of hammer away at the build on this. So. But yeah, that's pretty much all I got for you guys today. So if you stay till the end, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day.